Yeah. Fantastic. You're welcome to learn fundraising with uh, many blessing. Today, uh, this is my social media handle. You can follow me on social media. I'm active on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. My username is Menevo. So uh, before we get started, I'd like to introduce myself to you. Um, who am I? Um, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm the founder of Vets Arc. Um, Vets Arc is an agritech based in Lagos State, Nigeria. And we help farms increase um, access to capital. We help farms digitalize, farms and agribusinesses digitalize their businesses. And um, over the last couple of years, um, I've worked in agriculture. I worked in technology, uh, we build technology for both the government and private organizations. And um, I've also won a number of international awards for the work that I do um, in agriculture and also as a social entrepreneur. Um, my background is in um, agriculture, entrepreneurship, fundraising, technology. And so I have a combination of um, everything you know, needed to really deliver this topic to you. These are a couple of some of the awards I've won um, by God's grace and by God's favor. So um, today, I just want to, before we get started, um, I want to put a disclaimer here that uh, this does not constitute uh, any form of legal tax or financial advice. So make sure you talk to a qualified professional um, regarding your specific situation. Okay, so um, you'll be learning a couple of things today. This is our agenda. Uh, you'll be learning when to raise money, uh, why you should raise money, how to raise money, where you should go to, to raise money, and what type of money you should raise, um, who to raise money from. And more importantly, we're gonna have a Q&A session at the end of this training. So make sure you stay around so that I can uh, respond to the questions that you have, all right? Now, I'm going to start first by way of introduction. Um, I'm going to um, use a number of case studies. Okay, now, uh, before I go far into this presentation, I want to ask on a, which one I prefer, English or Pigeon? <laughs> so if you can just comment on the chat, let me, let me hear from you guys. Do you want to hear this presentation in English language or Pigeon English language? Okay, <laughs> somebody said English. And that means say pigeon, somebody say both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyone? Okay. No wala. <laughs> no wala. Okay. I go, I go combine them now. I go combine them. <laughs> so I won't break the thing down for now. So that I go understand this thing. Because sometimes when people they talk, say, eh, I raise one million dollars, I raise hundred thousand dollars. Sometimes your mind will be the one that say, ah, where did they see this money till they even they get till they, you know do this business or raise this money and there, uh, you know? So I will use um, simple um, examples to explain exactly what is going on in Africa, in Nigeria and how people they go about raising this money so that you can um, find yourself in this equation and also get the same results, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna use three types of businesses. Number one, I'll use like production businesses. So whether you're producing agri in agriculture, you're producing things like cream, uh, whatever type of production business you want to do. So you, you, you would, uh, I, I would use that example for you. I also use technology business because that's the most popular within the startup um, domain. So for those people who get ideas of say, I won't build one software, I won't build one app, I won't do this, or I won't do that. You know, um, I also get something for now. Then I use um, something, everybody understand fashion. So I also use fashion too to explain some of the things where I want to show now today. Okay, so make I move on from here. Now, uh, make we start with the basic matter, the most important matter. Why do people run businesses? Why do they run? Why somebody will say, eh, I won't go set up company or I won't set up, um, I get this idea where we say I won't implement. The whole idea we say, you are trying to make money, right? You're trying to make a profit. That is the only idea why why we run businesses, you know? So it is very important to keep this in mind that the most important thing is not just to run a business, say, because 
you know, get work where you want to, or you day I do, so you won't get yourself engaged in something. No, you run the business because you want to, you know, um, you want to start up um, something and you want to make profits in the process of doing so. Okay. So um, there are two ways you can make money in business generally. You have a product or a service, and then you sell that product or service. You understand the gist, right? Now, um, that is the first way. The second way you go make profits for- um, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm clear. Okay. The second way you go make profit for business, we say you go, um, you go, sell the business itself because some people don't know say um they think sell the company we say they build so you must not always say uh i run this business for one year 10 years 20 years you will die with the business no sometimes if you run the business with a point we say if you sell the business and then you go cash out you know so a, a normal example why i would like you to say a uh, person say one build house i mean in get this idea maybe you just say ah i go like build house so maybe i want to build duplex or i want to build estates whatever the idea is you can sit down sit down sit down discuss the idea with your architect after you discuss the idea with your architect or with your friend they design the building out on paper and everything right then from there the next thing you need to do is say you build that thing into an actual building okay now this um your idea if you decide to say, ah, I get one fantastic idea. Maybe say, you know, um, uh, uh, the idea is they so good, go transform this company, go do this, go do that, or like an invention. If you carry the idea, go sell, right? But if you go sell the idea to an organization, the pay not going to be high like that, you know? Because I see some of them, I ask, say, uh, what if person get proposal when want to submit to organization, or person get this idea when want to do something? <laughs> Ideas are not actually worth much. That's just the truth. In raw format, it is cheap. Egg, egg, egg is about 100 naira. Egg itself is not worth much. But if you go to some uh, restaurant for Lagos, Abuja, or so if you even buy uh, one fried egg for 2,000 naira, because they don't package it in package and they don't fry the egg, put it on top of uh, this thing, put you under AC, blow your head as they shove the egg. So. Whenever you take time to process the idea or add value to the idea, then you can sell it for much, okay? So uh, it brings me to a very important question. Why fundraise? Why do you have to fundraise money? Because some people don't know why. There are two reasons why you have to, there are a number of reasons why you have to fundraise money. Number one, we say you get idea for inside your head or for inside your paper, for house. You, you don't write for your book, say, ah, I'm going to build this farm or I'm going to build this um, production company. I'm going to set up this boutique that will go over Nigeria, or I'm going to have a software that, you know, people will be using across Nigeria or across Africa or across the world. Whatever your idea is, whatever your motivation is, you need to be able to take that idea from your head and from your paper and take it to the market. And the market is a place where we say people they go buy your idea or subscribe to your idea or pay for your goods and services. The second reason why you need to fundraise, we say, so in order for you to build this um, idea where you get for your head, so, or build this um, product so that people can begin to patronize you on a small scale or on a large scale, you are going to incur costs, Abby. So therefore you need to be able to do what? You need to be able to, um, uh, what do you call it now? You need to be able to cover the cost of implementing your idea. Like this person now, we say one build house. In get vision, saying one build house or build estates. Uh -huh. Now money that we use to buy cement, money that you use to buy land, money you use to pay all the workmen we go on the site. Even the architect will go draw the building plan. You have to pay them. So that cost of running the entire thing needs to be covered with money, which you may not have, or your uncle may not even be willing to give to you. For those of now we get rich uncle and auntie. The third reason why you need to raise money, be say, sometimes, eh, if you get idea, we be say, it go take time before the you go start to they make profits. Maybe for the first one year or two years or three years, if you know they make profit, the business they run, oh, the business they run, you they pay salary, you you get customers where they buy and sell and all those things. But 
you never reach profitability. So you need to have enough money, you know, to keep the business ongoing. And this is very um, applicable to people who are doing technology because you have to pay your software developers, your designers, pay for this, pay for that. And for people who say they run production company, you need money to continue to grow and expand your business, you know? So um, to until you reach profitability, you may need to be injecting more money into your business. And some of them are here already get to now own small, small business one that you do, but now they look for money when I go use the expand and maybe. Mm -hmm. So that is why we're all here today. So make I teach you about um, the fundraising journey, okay? Please make sure you pay attention because this thing where they teach so now premium, premium. Make sure you 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 open your ear. Not like village people tie your ear or anybody will really disturb you. Now just tell them same day, one way or one side. Okay, when to raise money. So the the process of building your business or growing your business or your idea to an actual business requires certain step. It's a step by step process. Some people just think, say, uh, they did like this now. They won't build estates. They need one billion. Some people go, they pray. Some people go, they say, hey, the thing go they far from their mind. They don't even know where they go, go to go get even one million or 10 million or 100 million. But the thing where you're supposed to know, be say, fundraising is step by step. You know, they happen once. So if your vision is 100 million or 500 million, 1 billion or 10 billion naira or dollars, doesn't matter. The thing is that you will start from somewhere. So maybe you think you need uh, 500 million or 100 million in one year time. You will start first, if not 10 million, 5 million, 1 million, you start from somewhere. Then gradually, as the business, they grow, you they show results, you know, proof and all this kind of thing. The amount of money you'll be getting to grow the business will begin to increase. But if you just go meet investor now, or you carry your big head, go meet bank, say, ah, I get this idea what I want to do. Uh, say because say, you work for one place, you know, may they give you 100 million. Oh, boy, oh boy. If you not get a rep, eh, nobody go answer you. But if you go say, okay, my vision is to do this thing, it's going to be 1 billion naira in the next uh, five years. But now I want to start small. I need 10 million or 5 million. Then people will begin to listen to you because they're nothing on the crease. Now, um, in this journey, step-by-step -step journey, okay, there are specific points on the step that we call points of achievement. Take note, it's called points of achievement. You know, say that, uh, I tell you just and say, there are two ways to make profit in the business. From the sales of the product or service you are selling or from the sales of the business itself, okay? When you are dealing with investors, the investor, they look the sales of the business, uh, of the profit of the products and services, eh? that are one thing, but they, they also they look at what we call the value of the business, value of the business, AKA what they call valuation, valuation. It's called valuation, but the honorary term, the value of the business, that is what you look. So the more you achieve certain things, the more the value of your company they go. So Pacific day by the roadside now, they sell Akara. Hmm? Maybe every day now that they sell like 20,000 naira Akara, okay? The value of that woman business way day by the roadside, they different from the value of that restaurant, Chicken Republic, or more, we'll talk about one uh, local restaurant for your town, maybe Food Arena or something. Maybe that particular restaurant, they they fine, you know, they, they get big building, AC, customers, they come, buy food, buy food, buy food. Maybe at the end of every day, they, they sell like 1 million naira worth of food. Okay? So you go see say, that woman waiting by the roadside, her company, Nasi company, even though it's in a fire, which they use, that business this small. The value, maybe if you tell the woman, say, Madam, I think you 500 naira, maybe you pack, come up for this place. I won't take over this place. The woman will agree because, I mean, she never see 500 naira once in bulk like that from her business. Okay. But if you carry that same 500,000 naira, go meet that restaurant, say you want to buy their business, they're not going to agree. They go tell you, say, every day we they sell 1 million. So maybe if, in order for us to quit this business, give us 500 million because at the end of the year, Maybe our total sales are just 365 million for the 365 days. Maybe they you take 500 million or 1 billion. So that is how the value of the business is. 
Okay, when we talk about value of business, that is what we mean. So even your idea where you get for paper, get value, but the value is not much. Maybe one era, 100 hundred thousand, 100,000, you know, maybe 1 million, you know, but as the more you take action on the idea, you take small, small step on the idea, the value of your idea don't they go up, your business don't they go up. Do you understand? So the value is what another investor or person is willing to pay you in order for you to exit or leave that business for them. Okay, um, so there are what we call points of achievement. So the more you hit some of these targets, the more the value of your business goes up and it takes time, okay, it takes time. It's not something you do in one week or one month. It takes months, sometimes it takes years for you to become the next Dangote or next Elon Musk or whatever you, you want to become, okay? So now, when do you raise money? When do you raise money? The best time to raise money is when you just achieved a major thing in your company or with your idea, okay? Make I explain. So you see this diagram with your screen now? Hmm? This diagram with your screen now. Now, just as you say, now you, now you be this person. And maybe at the end, yeah, maybe your company is now worth $1 billion or whatever your end game is, okay? But today, this is where you are. You are still a small business or you don't even have anything at all, okay? So how do you, when is the best time to raise money? Because some people don't know, say, you get time to raise money. If you miss that time, you will not be able to raise money well. Even if you raise money, you raise money at a low valuation, a low value of the business, okay? So for example, let's say you have an idea, say um, you, want, uh, you want to build, maybe you want to produce soap, soap, where people go to use the bath, okay? And this is your soap. Maybe you get one formula or something. Your soap is very special, special soap. Or maybe you want to produce clothes and you get your own design for clothes. So you know, see those things, you see they your paper and see they your head. Eh? Immediately you learn how to produce it. You have the formula or you have the design like a prototype. You know, you produce something, even if your parlor or your kitchen, you say producer. Maybe you finalize that. Uh, products, yeah, which we'll call minimum viable products, okay? We just call it minimum viable products. Now, big grammar for um, <laughs> at least they work, something where they work, yeah? So maybe you finish that thing like this. You just hit a target. That's your first target here, which you see down these stairs. Hmm? You just hit that target. So your next target and say, okay, now I don't produce this soap. I don't produce one cup of soap and it smells, the soap smells well. People like the soap. My neighbor like the soap. My friends like the soap. Now I want to produce maybe 10 cartons, my first 10 cartons, okay? Now you can take back your product. Maybe to produce those 10 cartons, maybe you need 1 million naira or 500K. The best time to raise money is when you have produced that product. You can now go and meet somebody to say, ah, see what I don't produce. I won't produce uh, 10 cartons because these 10 cartons, people from my community want this soap. I don't talk to some shop, we won't buy this soap. So there's already demand for this soap. I just need to produce 10 cartons and I need 500,000 or 1 million or 10 million or whatever you need. That is the best time to raise the money because you have proof, you just achieved something. And you tell them, say, ah, I just achieved this in last month or last week. That is the person because then people believe in what they do. Do you understand? So sometimes maybe you don't they run the business for some time. You need to be achieving some kind of milestones. And I will go into details of what type of milestones you should be achieving before, uh, you know, in order to build momentum for you to raise money. But for now, just know say the best time to raise money is when you hit a point of achievement. So this red here you see is telling you about the best time to raise the money, okay? And then the yellow is your point of achievement. So raise money so that you can hit your next point of achievement. Immediately you hit that achievement, raise money again to hit your next point of achievement. So you must be strategic about this thing. It do, it's not magic, it's not hard, but you must plan and you must see it as a step-by-step -step process. Sometimes there was a time I wrote on my Facebook say, some people, they wait for breakthrough. They, they wait for destiny helper. Of course, God will send destiny helpers to our life. And we will, as, they, as we pray, they will come into our life. 
But don't forget, say you yourself, you need to be doing something towards your goal so that when your destiny ever come, you know, you can take things up from there. Okay, let's move on to the next uh, part of the presentation. Uh, when is the time not to raise money? Because if there's a good time to raise money, there's also a bad time to raise money. You know, some people, uh, they never um, achieve something, you know, uh, that they won't raise money. You never do anything. You say you get this idea, you they passionate about this, you they passionate about that. And I've been doing this business for 10 years or 100 years or whatever. But you never achieve something where it's a good day exciting for your investor or for your bank or whatever. But and they try to raise money. You know, good now. Even you reason now. You reason now. If your friend can't tell you now, say, uh, uh, Adiola, uh, uh, Joe, jo, uh, I want to do something. You know? I want, I want publish book. You say I want write book. Where you say uh, I go sell one thousand copy. You not say this your friend self. No one sabi write sentence. You agree get support and you not go support now because you never achieve something. We if we believe in, you know what I'm saying. But if your friend can tell you now say ah guy who I just win this essay competition. We uh, so so bank organized or so so organization organized. I win first prize. Or I come taught. And now we say I don't win this. I want to write one book. We say I feel published. You go like, ah, I'm more, I go like support you because I know say you know what they do. So the best time to raise money again is when you just achieve something important. Okay. So um, let's talk about another important topic: how to raise money. How to raise money. So um, if you go online, you go to hear this news, say, and this organization just raised a precede round of Five hundred thousand dollars, one million dollars. Tomorrow you go yes, they don't say pay stack. You know, like pay stack now. That's one of the fantastic stories of a company. I think they sold it for a few hundreds of millions of dollars, right? And you know, a lot of people became millionaires, billionaires, and all those things. So sometimes, if they hear all this story, your head will be like, ah, ah, where did they get the money? Who did they give them the money? How did they calculate? <laughs> how did they make all these calculations? So I won't explain to you how that thing they work because. Uh, even if you know the wrong startup, I still advise you to listen and understand it. Why? Because it will teach you how to even value your own organization, whether you collect money from investor or not, and how to value your own organization, whether you're collecting money from bank or not. Even if you are running an NGO, it's still good you understand this process because uh, even for NGOs, even if NGO you know they do precede or seed round, uh, there's some kind of money that you will never get as a grant you know, without achieving something important with your NGO. You know, there's some money, you know, go smell up. Not only some, some money you could get, except you achieve some major things. So the process is still useful, okay? So stay with me. Now, when you build your idea or your company, you know, you remember say, I tell you, say, uh, maybe you produce that soup for kitchen or for your parlor, wherever you produce that soup now. And uh, maybe for that uh, production we do, by the time you experiment, 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 maybe you don't burn like 50K, 100K or 200K, whatever amount of money you spend, doesn't matter. But what we call that eh, in fundraising is called bootstrapping. The grammar bootstrapping. So you know where you wear boots, boots, shoe, shoe, boots, boots. You know, when you they tie the, the, the or canvas, you they tie the, that rope for your canvas, you are doing it yourself. So it's called bootstrapping. That's the English. May they not confuse you. Uh, bootstrapping. So that's what we call it. Fundraising step number one. So which means that nobody wants to support a vehicle that is parked. Even you yourself, if they go somewhere, you know they like to enter bus with a park or somewhere because you could see they won't kidnap you. <laughs> you prefer the bus where they move. As the bus they move, you stand for road, you, you stop the bus, you enter. That is how we do it in Africa, right? So the same thing too, before you say, somebody say, eh, come and invest in my idea, or you go and talk to investor, I'm not getting money, I don't know how to raise money, all those kind of excuse or reasons. At least you take step first. You, you invest in your own idea first. That is what we call bootstrapping, okay? Now this bootstrapping, uh, the, that your early investment, maybe that money where you use this that can come from your savings. If you don't get money, maybe your parents will give you money or some of your friends will give you money. Now, if you don't have money yourself and you don't have friends who will give you money and your family not support you, there's an issue because it means say you are not even investments ready and you are not investable, which means that it is either you have bad character, you have bad behavior, 
or something is wrong. That is why nobody wants to support you or maybe not, <laughs> not village people or something. But most likely something is wrong. And that means that you need to work on your relationship. You need to work on your relationship. In your relationship with your parents, your dad, your mom, your siblings, you need to be a good person and a decent person. Try to understand human behavior, right? Because some of us, we want to be stubborn, we, we want to be saucy, we want to misbehave, but you don't forget, say, this is your misbehavior, we cost you something. You, are, you misbehave to your neighbor, you misbehave to this, misbehave to that. All those things, they affect you when you want to try to grow your company. That's why you see people will be say they grow big business. Many times, they have good working relationship with other people. So make sure, say, you know, say, how they behave towards your brother in your house, your wife, your husband, if they affect how you go use to raise money. Many people don't know. They just think, say, people they invest in idea. No, people invest in you, you, you first before they, they give you money. So if your husband or your wife, you no know, say, you're a reckless spender or you misbehave, they don't like you as a person, or your brother or sister, you no know, say, you they borrow money, you know, they return, or your landlord or neighbor, you know, or your friends, they don't know your character. You need to start trying to improve yourself because your journey go long. You know, all these things where they teach now go hard you because at the end of the day, you cannot apply it because of your character. So make sure say you work on your character, okay? Especially in stage one phase, bootstrapping, so that you can get people to support you if you don't have the money yourself to invest in this your idea. Okay. Now once you don't develop this your soap, you move to stage two, okay? Stage two is that, uh, stage one, you produce this soap in your kitchen, and then you even manage to struggle to gather money. You can't go produce like 10 cartons, 20 cartons, which you sell for your area. They sell to shop, Mama is your shop, Mama is this in shop or supermarket. Yeah, you don't sell to them, supply to them. Now you are not making progress. You are not having what to call momentum. Now, the next stage, we say you want to rent place where we say you go call your small company, okay? Where we say if you rent, you people one or two small machines, hire one or two people, we go to work for you so that you can now start supplying to market women. Eh? Before you're doing 50 cartons, now you're looking at, okay, 500 cartons. Yeah? You want to supply 500 cartons. Your, your blood is hot. <laughs> now you need what we call precede money. What is the meaning of this precede money? This precede money is to help you achieve, you know, this, um, I will teach you more about that, but the general idea we say, you they try make sure say your product eh, is solving a problem in the market and you are having some form of more sales. You know, from there, you move on to a more advanced stage, which is seed round. So in seed round, the general idea we say, you they try dominate your market for that community or maybe for your state, or for the full country, you know? Uh -huh. At that stage, you don't need popular, people don't need know your product, your product doesn't go far, and all those kind of things. But then you are thinking big. And then after that, you have all these things they call Series A, Series B, and all that. Don't concern yourself too much with that. But the general thing I want you to know is that at this stage, at this later stage, you um, people, they sell the company. So they have, there's this company they call Honesty. Honest T. And um, I read their story some years ago, and, and it was just mind blowing. They started, they, I think the guys who started the company, they been going one community like that. When they reach the community, they can't see, say, the community people, they get one kind of tea, where they say they make from some leaves like that. And once you take the tea, very nice, you know, your body will feel alive and all those things. So when, and they went there as stories too, they take that same formula, build it into a product, package them for bottle, when they sell them for, uh, America. They're selling it in their own community in America. And guess what thing happened? As they move from bootstrapping to proceed to seed round, around all this series A or so, Coca-Cola buy the company. Coca-Cola and I buy that company. They acquire the company. Even some of them are within Nigeria uh, uh, or, or from Ghana and wherever you're joining us from. You observe, say, um, especially in Nigeria, you know, um, the chi exotic, CHI. You know, they have this chi exotic that is very nice. They even have this, um, uh, what do you call it now? I've forgotten the name of that um, product. But they have chi exotic and some of these beautiful drink. You know that Coca-Cola, uh, 
acquired that company. I don't even know if they finished buying it, but they own a huge percentage in that company. Do you understand? Because when you when you are becoming big in the market, you are now what we call you are now a threat. So at that point, the people will be say don't do that market before. They want to consolidate their power, so they will come and buy you because you are not threatening their business. Do you understand? So that's why they say you make money from the sales of the product. And when you grow very big, you can make money from the sales of the company. Okay, so let's move on from this point. So like I said earlier, the precede round is about four things. You are trying to achieve four things. Number one, you're trying to demonstrate that you have a working product. Number two, a credible team. Like I said before, people invest in you, you, you. And they also invest in your team, okay? Very important, the people you work with. Then number three, you're trying to demonstrate, say, at least to I sell or I sell or I sell or I don't get some customers or I don't get some customer. That is what is important. And then number four, you need to have a clear growth strategy, which, which means, say, even though you don't know how you could dominate your market for your state or your country or your area or the full Africa, but at least just begin to have an idea of, how you will grow this business or how you will distribute your product to more locations. That is your target at this precise round. We're not saying you should be very, very successful, but we're saying that these are the basic criteria that you should meet in running this uh, business or product. So let's go back to the case studies I talked earlier. All right. So I said earlier that uh, at the precise round, you're trying to achieve problem solution fits and you are trying to take your product development and sales to the next level. So yeah, as you can see on this screen, now the product has been packaged. You know, you see the presentation is looking nice. Uh -huh. This is what you want to achieve at this stage. Your product is looking good. People appreciate it. Well packaged, smells well, smells nice, all those kind of things. Now we're talking business, okay? Then for uh, most uh, people where they do technology, at this stage, you have a team that is coding your application, at this stage, um, some people are already using your product. Maybe it hasn't gone far, but at least some people are using your product and some people are paying for your product, you know, and then you are showing that this thing can become a big business. That is all you are doing at this precise stage. So whatever money you raise, you are trying to achieve these targets that I just talked about. Then let's look at another example of a fashion brand. Maybe you are a tailor or so, so, so. How do you move from your small, Tailoring machine to becoming a company that is raising money. It is this, this is the process. Eh? So at this stage, now you've been saying before, now you don't need package. You have your own small showroom that people can come to. Everything is looking excellent. And then you are also selling to boutiques or direct to consumers. I think there's this lady uh, online, um, see funky collections or something like that, that sells shoes, right? Uh, and all this kind of fashion accessory, you know, this, this is the stage, like you're already having a lot of people coming to buy your products and all those kind of things, you know? So um, I believe that you understand this point. Now, let me move on to this next um, stage in that process, bootstrapping, proceed. Let's talk about seed round now. So when you hear a company has raised seed round, which you will be hearing a lot if you are within this ecosystem, what they are trying to tell you is that this company now has just gotten money to prove that they can dominate the market. They will seize the market. Do you understand? That is what their money is. So you hear say somebody raised $1 million, $10 million, whatever. They're all trying to prove that they will take over the market. So this is the point of the takeover of the market, all right? And at this point, what you're trying to achieve is that you're trying to achieve product market fits, which means your product fits the market demand, you know, is solving a big problem for customers, you know, and then you're having customers, you are growing fast. And I tell people, startup is different from your normal business, okay? Why I talk so? Start, uh, your normal business is like a goat, a goat or a ram or a sheep, right? No matter how you feed that goat, you're not gonna become cow, you're not gonna become elephant. So it's, it's just a, a normal thing you're doing it, you're satisfied. And there is no problem with that. In fact, most people don't need to run startup, right? Especially in Africa, where things are quite hard. You don't need to be a startup. But what I find useful is that the methodology for growing a startup, I think people should adopt it because the process 
is quite rigorous, you know, in terms of how you should think about growing and managing your business, you know. So not everybody should be a startup, but I think that understanding how startup works would help you, um, again, improve or grow your business, okay? So let's move on. Now, we are back to our case study we talked about earlier. So in the seed round, you remember the soap production company? Now, um, they have now moved into supermarkets. They have now moved, they now have their own showroom, you know, like what you see in this picture. Everything is looking well packaged, beautiful. They are having customers demanding their product from every location. That is what we call customer acquisition. You know, aggressive marketing is going on. You know, so this is what a seed round stage looks like. Then um, for the people who are doing software, app, technology, and other things, eh, what exactly is happening here is that you're having a lot more um, download for your product, all that's happening. And just to state here, because I know that most people want to tech, 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 tech. The likelihood of success in tech is quite low. Let me just be frank. It's quite low. When you hear for every one company you hear say has reached precede or Cedron, my guy, many other people they suffer. They suffer. It's like a gambling, gambling because everybody they hope see they go make them, they go make them, they go make them, but not everybody will make it. That is just the truth. And different things happen to scatter the startup or the technology and business. Okay, so you must not do app. You must not do software. Okay. Um, it can be a traditional agricultural company. It can be a normal production business. There are many businesses that are waiting to be implemented in Nigeria. Up to today, no human being or youth has sat down in Nigeria to say, okay, people are buying Akara every single day in this country. Every single day. Nobody has thought about how can we set up a, a standard Akara, something that we can franchise across the country. You know? The way MTN was able to distribute their, um, what do you call it now? Their uh, research card. You know, nobody has, because people look down on these things. But you know that the person who sells Akara by the roadside is even making more money than many tech startup. Okay? So this look at your environment and solve problems relevant to your environment. Don't, don't sometimes be carried away, except you're into tech, then focus on it. But I'm just saying that, um, not everybody will be as successful, okay? And just keep that at the back of your mind. Okay, um, now for the fashion um, case study we are looking at, you go see, say, now, eh, eh, for this fashion, now you now see that your clothes, you're not organizing um, fashion runway, people are coming together, you're participating in international programs, you have models who are using your clothes, influencers pushing your products, all these kind of things that you understand. So. In this particular case now, right? Maybe some, some people say they even get their own website where they are selling their products and fulfilling orders, you know? So it's still about aggressive marketing, aggressive uh, getting higher number of customers and getting more sales. Because if business makes profit from the sales of his products and services and eventually from the sales of his business. So technically what people are doing as they are selling, they are also trying to sell a story that the value of this company is going up they, because they want to be threats to bigger companies, okay? So that they can be bought over or so that they can start using the scale, like the big size that they have across the country to make millions of dollars, you know? Now let's move on. So um, there's something I've observed, right? Um, why should you have a fundraising strategy? Because uh, the truth is that over 90% of businesses or companies have zero, zero with a big O and a dot. In fact, two I's inside the zero. They don't have any fundraising strategy. Okay. And that is a big mistake, actually. Big mistake. You need to have a clear fundraising strategy. And so I want to show you why a fundraising strategy is important and the difference it makes in an organization. So let's look at the first one. Uh, you bootstrapped, okay, um, with whatever amount you had, and then you grew, then you raised a precede round of $100,000, which is around 50 to 60 million or whatever amount, Naira, yeah? So your investor invests maybe 50 million Naira, and in exchange, they get 10% of your company. 
then you, you're successful, you raise a seed round. Seed round, like $2 million. And then if, you remember I tell you, you the value of the company don't go up. So the valuation is $10 million, right? I'm using dollars because dollars is stable and most times when uh, investors invest, they use dollars to invest. So that's why I'm using it, okay? So just follow the example and I'm using big numbers too, so that you would think big, okay? If you came here before thinking of how you get 500K, I want your brain to shift so that you'll be thinking big too, okay? But again, remember what I said, think big, start small. Okay, so seed round of two million at ten million naira, ten million dollar valuation. So what you see, for example, is that at the end of the seed round or so, uh, this company on the left who has a fundraising strategy has already sold maybe about twenty five percent of their company and all that. And by the time they get acquired, maybe at fifty million dollars, you will see that the pe the person who started the company, the founders, eh, they take home around thirty million dollars, which is they are already billionaires, like Naira, yeah, but our millionaires in dollars. So the take home is large. But if you look at the right, you see that this guy, instead of raising six rounds, maybe he took loan or maybe they could not raise as much money. So they have the value of the company is down. They can't grow, you know, and then maybe eventually when they manage to hit their seed round, because they did not grow, they are trying to do organic, 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 you know. Organic is very good. Again, organic is good, please. But I'm saying that if you are thinking of growing your business uh, with investors' money, you need to think of it as a story. You need to be growing aggressively, okay? If you want to go the organic route, it's okay, 100%. 100% is okay. In fact, most people should do the organic because then you have peace of mind. Um, and then the profits that is coming in, you're using it for whatever you're doing and you can move small, small, that's okay. But what you see is that eventually if you decide to do um, seed round and all those kind of things, your valuation will be so low. So in this case now, by the time both companies you acquired for the same amount of money, but you see that the guy on the right, who has the, on the left, who has a plan, is going home with four times more money than the person who they spend the same number of years, suffer the same number of suffer build the same type of company, but one person is four times richer because they had a clear fundraising strategy. So I want you to leave today knowing that ah, I will plan, I will plan. I was discussing with one of my very good friends, Shama, um, some days ago, and she was talking about the power and the importance of planning, you know, and taking actions on your plan. So it's the same thing I'm saying here that when people run companies or when you decide to build your, you want to build this vision you have for the next 10 years, make sure you are planning and working towards it, okay? Now, um, so let me come back to this again. The key is understanding the points of achievement for your startup, your NGO, your idea, your projects, and to raise money when you have hit a milestone, you understand, before your next major milestone, make sure you raise money when everybody is excited, when the energy is there, you know, when people are, uh, uh, some people, when people, they call them, congratulations, 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 at that time, they won't show, say, they be big boys or big girls. They are held called a swear, like a balloon, fake balloon, another thing. Before you know what is happening, they will lose that season. So th the time when people, they congratulate you on Facebook, hey, guy, ah, how did you do this? Wow, that is the time. You say, you start raising, oh yeah, we did this, uh, and we are raising for our next round though. And come on, we are trying to raise uh, 10 million or 20 million. So come and give us money so that we can give you a percentage of this, this, this company or whatever structure you want to use for that money. So do you understand? Don't let pride come in because you will lose out. Do you understand? That's not the time to be celebrating. That's the time to take in the energy and use the energy to move your business forward. Okay. so. Uh, I, I promised you that I would teach you what are these points of achievement. So these are the points of achievement. So um, actually we look at it across uh, four different dimensions, okay? Um, you can classify the points of achievement for any business over four dimensions, okay? At least these four dimensions. Number one is the product itself. Number two is the sales and marketing. And number three is what I call intellectual property, you know? then business development. So I'll go into each of them. Now, um, 
Let's start with um, products. So for the product, remember what we talked about making the cream in your kitchen. That is minimum viable product. At least it's working, it's smelling nice, it's foaming. And then uh, you've tested it, there's no more, uh, repercussion, you know, and all those kind of things. So, and then you try to get NAVDAC number, right? Maybe you get a small place, go pay NAVDAC and all those kind of things. Now you have a solid uh, uh, product that you release on a small scale and you have NAVDAC number and a few people are using that product, you know? So that is a point of achievement, you know? Then the next one we talk about is sales and marketing. Oh, some people are not buying my product too and we have started making money. Uh, and most of you will understand the joy of your first sale. You know, it's beautiful when you have this idea in your head and you sell your first product. That, in fact, the joy you get from your first sale can comp <laughs> nothing compares to it, even if you make one billion later on, right? That your first sale is always a good memory, you know? So um, uh, intellectual property is uh, are things like trade secrets. So you made this soap in your kitchen. Now you are the one that knows the formula. Okay, I added water, I added oil, I added this chemical, that chemical in this quantity, in this quantity. I mix them at this temperature and this is the process. You are the one that knows it. That's your trade secret. Coca-Cola too has its own trade secret. That's why nobody can produce their type of trade secret. Um, there's this company I like a lot, um, Buffalo uh, Wings. Buffalo, I think Buffalo Chicken Wings, they make chicken but they have a process for making that chicken. It's really nice. Very, very nice crispy chicken, yeah? And that is a patented process. Some of you have gone to places like KFC, where they make KFC chicken. It's proprietary to that company. So some of you build softwares, that is proprietary to you, you know? So those type of ideas, are um, those type of um, things are uh, points of achievement. If um, Sometimes you might need to get licenses from uh, SEC, like, um, you see uh, a lot of people will lost money for crowdfunding. What is crowdfunding thing? Why did they lose their money? Because the, the startups did not get the required licenses. You know, they did not do the right things, you know? So they just collected money from people, invest here, invest here, invest here, but they did not have the right licenses or partnerships or support to make those businesses a success. So we move on to the last point, which is strategic partnership, like I just said, and having um, things like a good distribution network to sell your products, you know? So these are what we call points of achievement. So as you raise money, you need to um, uh, use this as your KPIs or as your criteria, you know, to um, the kind of things you should be achieving. So where should you raise money from? So this list is not exhaustive. There are um, a lot of companies and organizations you can raise money from. Internationally, you have places like Y Combinator, which is the most competitive and startup program in the world. You have Techstars, which is also um, another very competitive um, accelerator program in the world. Catapult, um, Google. So most of these um, programs, there are many others, actually, many others, hundreds of them online that you, you can um, get information about, right? Now, the thing is that um, the, the, the most time, okay, I will talk about it later, the kind of things uh, most of these investors look out for, you know, when they're trying to finance ideas, but just keep in mind that there are plenty of them beyond this four. Um, then in Nigeria, in Af West Africa, there are a number of programs like MEST, there's CC Hub, CC Hub is very popular, founded by Bosman uh, Bosun in Lagos, and it's a very good um, uh, organization. They're based in um, Yaba, you know, highly recommended um, ventures platform. Um, they're based in Abuja, Lofty Inc. is also another one, Magic Phone. There are a number of these programs in um, Nigeria, although most of them are resident in Lagos and uh, Abuja. And so it brings me to a point which many people uh, I know some of you on this call may be affected. You may be seeing a small town, you know, like for me, I grew up in um, Sapple, you know, Delta States. Um, I also grew up in Zaria, you know, and sometimes you might feel like, ah, this place I'm living in is a village, it's remote. But the thing is that from anywhere, you can go anywhere. Even there was a time during my NYC, I was traveling, up, I traveled abroad, for international programs, you know, with the permission of my boss, you know, and I won a number of awards. So it doesn't matter where you are, you can work from your village. So long you are achieving these tractions, 
and hitting this thing, you will get your investors, okay? And then sometimes you may need to uh, travel to these locations, go to CC Hub, oh, this is what I'm doing, you know, this is, and make friends there. Talk to the people running the place and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. You know, when something comes up, you know, they can inform you, they'll send you email, or there's this opportunity. So try and build relationships. Don't just stay somewhere in your village or somewhere and you are not communicating with anybody, you know, you, no exposure, nothing. Ah, one more, that one there. Yeah. So, so make sure that once in a while, even if it's once a year, travel to Lagos, go and visit these people. They have websites, they have emails, write to them. You know, go to the location during working hours and find out what's up. The man who has desire will move mountains, you know? And Dr. Mike Mullock said, the proof of desire is pursuit. When you want something, you pursue it and you go after it, okay? Then you have the um, Lagos Angels Business Network and all that in Lagos. Then um, some of you might, might, might not need investment. Some of you are after grants. If you're looking for grants, grandmasters.xyz um, is a very good place to go. I know the founder, Benga, also I'm part of the, I'm on the advisory board. It's a fantastic um, um, company. They would provide you, um, they will help you write your grant applications and those kind of things um, for a small fee. You have opportunitydex.org founded by a brilliant um, woman, um, Dr. Grace, her name is Grace. And, you know, she, she, she's been running this platform for so many years now, and it's been one of the best places to go to. Opportunities for Africans to also locally uh, created. Then UTB, uh, a team, also runs like a blog where he shares those things. And then Dayo Adetiloye Hub, um, I forgot to write it here, but if you go online, check for Dayo Adetiloye blog. It's also um, a very fantastic, I know Dayo himself, they provide some services to help you with some of these applications and all that. So I just wanted to share that with you. Now, um, what are the kind of things that um, your investor or your bank will be looking out for when they want to finance you? So these are the criteria, you know, I want to share them with you. These are the criteria they look at when they are trying to finance you. Number one, number one, and this is applicable whether you are in Wari, you are in Joss, you are in uh, Benin, you are in Lagos, Abuja, Washington, D.C., or you are in Germany, it doesn't matter, or you're in China, these criteria I'm sharing with you, they are universally and globally applicable. You must meet up with the same standard, okay? Number one, do you have a large market? Is your product serving a large market? By large market, what do we mean? <laughs> your normal market now that you go to in your town, right, has a lot of people who are there to buy, covers a wide space, it's not just one shop, covers a wide space, and it's easy for anybody to enter. Some people fly by go market, some people enter bus go market, enter KK, enter go market, take Uber go market, right? So a large market, does your product address a large market? So does it have potential to reach many customers? Does it have potential to be bought, you know, in location A, location B? Can it be sold beyond your community to other states or across the country? or even exported out of the country. So a large market is very, very vital, you know, to the type of product or service that an investor is willing to fund. The second criteria, right, um, they look at for is, are you solving a problem that is common, okay? Now, when we say a problem is common, what do we mean? We mean that, okay, we mean that uh, uh, people are experiencing problem with this, um, are experiencing this problem on a frequent basis, number one. Number two is that um, people are experiencing th this problem either on a daily basis or a weekly basis, okay? And then um, people are trying to do something to solve this problem. So these are the um, top three criteria to keep in mind. You know, oh, are my target customers um, experiencing this problem frequently? You know, is, how, how, is this a headache to them? You know, when you have headache, uh, was it the Carnegie who said that a man who has headache, right? Uh, his headache is more important to him than an earthquake happening in China. Even you, when you have headache, you don't send anybody. You know, they send anybody again. I mean, uh -huh. it's the same thing. So make sure that whatever you're doing, you are solving a problem that people have. Okay. Then the second, uh, the third thing is that your solution should be simple to use. <laughs> and, and I love this because. Um, I mean, 
I've, I've run a software um, vet act, and we've made mistakes, really. We've made mistakes in running um, vet act. And um, one of the things I've actually learned in that process is that um, tech companies, many times, because we are a very technical set of people, we tend to build products that are complex to use, all right? You build this product because you're an expert, and then at the end of the day, when you take it to your customer, the customer is confused. They have to take a course to learn how to use your product. You know, so the simpler the product is to use, the better it will perform. You know, so this is one of the cases where simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Yes, simplicity works. Don't get carried away with spending money trying to build one software and all those things. It, go for something simple, you know. Even though simple things are harder because the simpler the product is, the more um, expensive it might be to build. <laughs> it's kind of counterintuitive, right? Um, the simpler, no, no, not expensive, but uh, the the more brain work goes into making it simple. That's what I, I meant to say, right? Uh, and therefore, if you are hiring someone to build it, they might charge you a good fee just to make sure that they give you something simple. Um, simple products have short learning core, which means you don't want to change the behavior of people. You don't go and build soap that looks like a table. Or, or that is as big as a laptop because you are trying to innovate. <laughs> Soap is supposed to be liquid, and if it is solid, it should be small so that the hand, human hand, can hold it. Um, if you come up with a new design for soap and something, you might have to start teaching people, you know, and then it takes you longer to sell. Okay. Then um, the fourth criteria is distribution, sales, 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 distribution. How will you distribute this product? So do you have a network of people who will be selling this product? Do you have, um, uh, how easy would it be for people to assess your product, you know? And then is this thing generating money on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis? That is something that tickles the fancy and imagination of investors. Then, um, number, is, it, is it number five or six now? A strong team. <clears throat> In fact, when you're talking to many VCs, after criteria number one, which is, is this product um, addressing or targeting a large market. <clears throat> the second thing that investors want to see is your team. What are they looking for in the team? Do you have the expertise, the experience, the background to run this type of business? You studied uh, uh, food and nutrition. You are trying to build a nuclear chemistry uh, product or something. So, I mean, it's, it's okay, but you need to have had some experiences or some skill sets, you know, to be able to do this. And then the second thing they look at for is um, faithfulness, you know, and, and this is something that even needs to change because if you're a VC watching this video, either now or, or in the future, I just want to state here, especially for you investors, um, in Africa, it is very important that you judge companies not necessarily based on how great their revenues are like you have in the US, where the value of the currency is high, but you should also look at how long that company has existed because greed is a very important thing. Greed, stamina is very important in Africa. You know, So when you see somebody has been running a business for three years, four years, and all those kinds of things, even though they are not making billions, right? You should that should tell you something about the attitude of the team that they believe in what they are doing and they are willing to invest their time, resources, talent into making it work. So they are faithful people, and faithful people are fruitful people. So therefore, invest in them, support them. Okay. Um, the last thing that um, I personally look at for when I make uh, this type of evaluation is the resourcefulness of the person running the company. Or the team, you know, some people are not resourceful. Um, they cannot, they don't have connections, they don't have nothing, they are just taking, taking, taking from the team. They are like liabilities and all those kind of things. Um, you don't want that on your team. You want to have people who can leverage their connections to move the business forward or bring in their skill set to move the business forward. Now let's move on to the next thing. Um, <laughs> a pocket of money. So another thing investors look at for is like. Um, okay, have you guys invested your own money to get this thing started? Do you have some money to be able to move forward on your own, even if we invest or not? Um, there was a time when one of the interview questions I got 
um, years back when um, my company won the Google challenge. One of the questions they asked me was that, um, I've forgotten it, but I think it had to do with like, if you don't even get this money, like what are you going to do next, right? And I told the guy, I said, see, and this was in as far back, was it 2018 or 2019? 2018, yeah. I told him, I said, see, <laughs> whether I not give me money or not give me money, yeah, we, we continue doing our work, right? Then number two, be it known unto thee that if you don't give me money, you are the one losing. <laughs> I'm not pushing them for my too, but I just they tell them my mind say, the best person to give this money to in this Nigeria is my team because we are committed to this idea and we are going to make it happen. And if you decide that you are giving it to somebody else, now you lose. And you lose because at the end of the day, they will chop your money, do this, do this, or they might not even succeed with the project. You know, and all that. And ah, the guy just looked at me like this. And I say that at the risk of knowing that, you know what, it's possible that somebody might misinterpret that or they say, ah, this guy is just proud. No, it's confidence. And that's the truth. Even when that we, we finished that project, delivered on the project, right? I can tell you that we continued our work. We continued our work, even without zero funding. We continued our work, building, continue continue on that vision, stayed on it with or without funding. So when an investor sees that kind of thing, they like it because you can succeed without them. And people usually like people they can succeed without so that they will not be the one begging you. Oh, I would give you money to pursue this business. You know, tell them, sorry, uh, I don't need to do another thing. <laughs> so um, finally, this is not on their criteria, but it is an unspoken rule, okay? I call it a grain of grace. Um, uh what's it christ who said that if you have faith as small as a monster seed you will move mountains right it is important that there is a string of favor in your life some form of divine favor <laughs> because everybody wants to be on the right side yeah so it's good to just have companies who you know you you just see something happen to them right and uh, you just know that these guys are making progress and my, my firm is one of those type of organizations yeah we have been favored like we've been favored Every single year, something is happening, right? And it's not because we are really smart people, no. It's because of the grace of God, right? Sometimes you apply for programs, you get selected. Um, uh, uh, was it a few months ago, I had um, someone from GIZ at my office with me and my team, you know, spend time with us. And like things we didn't plan for, things we didn't plan for, you know, happening. So favor, um, even with your customers, you know, um, just yesterday, well, I, someone was using my product. I didn't even know. And they're based in Spain, you know? And I was like, ah, ah. and they've been using the product consistently for so long. I was like, ah, I didn't know that something like that was happening. You know? So I was just happy about it. You know, just hearing customer stories, customers like you, customers want to work with you. That kind of favor is very important. Investors like you, they want to, they want to be a part of what you're doing. Those kind of favors are important. And you yourself too. Show favor to people, show favor to your staff, show favor to the people who are working with you in any little way possible, right? Because what goes around comes around, okay? So um, ladies and gentlemen, I've come to the end of our session today. Um, thank you very much for listening. I would like us to spend the next few minutes. Um, uh, I would like to invest my time answering your questions, okay? So if you have a question, there are two ways you can share your question with me. Number one is to write the question in the chat box, right? In your chat box, write the question. The second thing you can do, right, is to, if you have a good network, number one, and number two, if your background is not noisy, I'll raise your hand up and then I will unmute you to ask your question. And please, when you're asking your question, simply mention your name and go straight to the point, okay? So thank you very much. So I would start with the people who um, uh, write, you know, who write their questions. So please just type your question in the chat, chat box. Okay, so we have some people raising their hands now. I have Emmanuel. Emmanuel. 
They found you. So, from why Emmanuel is trying to mute? Uh, I have um, Bright. Good morning, sir. Okay, is this Emmanuel? Yes, this is Emmanuel. Okay, Emmanuel. Okay, I want to first uh, um, appreciate you for everything. Though I came late, but I want to appreciate you for giving us the opportunity to learn from the pool and from your knowledge bank. I run it, I run it a, a firm, a startup with a, a, with a partner, with a co-founder. And basically what we're trying to do is to um, change the circle of delivery in um, Lagos specifically, especially okay. for the estates, people living in an enclosed environment, which is an estate, to mm -hmm. help them facilitate their um, orders and their delivery within the estate mm -hmm. using an eco-friendly um, tool. But mm -hmm. we we'll have also come to a point where we'll be needing funding. And that's the main reason why I feel that this whole lecture is very important to my team. But I want to ask, in as much as we need funding, in as much as we want investors to in invest, mm -hmm. what will be, um, how important will be the constitution of the board to funding? Okay, good, good question. So um, how important is the constitution of your company board, right? So funding. Yes. Um, so, mm, that's a good question. So let me because answer it. Sorry, sir. Mm -hmm. Why I'm asking, though I am a lawyer into corporate practice mm -hmm. and start up uh, law with other areas of law, mm -hmm. but I understand basically that at some point you also need to think at outside and also learn from good heads like you. Yeah. Because running a running my law firm is different from running um, the startup because on the startup I'm on, I I may not be. Uh, working two four seven as I may just be a director, I may be on the board, but may not be in the operation, the daily operation yeah. of the company. I get it. I get based it. on my, my profession, but okay. I also want to understand the importance of the board. Okay, okay. I get the I question. Get I get the question, Emmanuel. Thank you. Um, I would say that the board is important. Yes. Um, how does the board impact fundraising? Uh, one of the ways it could impact fundraising would be that um, if the board members have connections, right, um, to either investors or they have connections or goodwills to um, banks, then that would be fantastic, right? That would be absolutely like fantastic for you to have them on your board if they agree to be on your board, right? Uh, the second thing that the board does is that if they don't have the connections for you, they should have wisdom, 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 you know, wisdom that you can leverage on and use to um, grow your business, right? Or um, that you can use to do um, like fundraising or apply for grants and all those things. Um, the third thing um, I realized is that more important than the board is your team. Not like they're more important, but I think the quality of your team matters because um, you might decide to get a very strong board and a weak team, right? And it doesn't matter what your board tells you to do, you may not be very good with execution because you have a weak team, right? So it's important to like just balance things out. And don't forget that at the end of the day, if you like have done good team on your board or not, right? The, um, the, the person responsible for the success of the company is the executive team the CISO team, the CEO, the CEO, the CTO, the person in charge of sales, you know, um, the person, the CFO, you know, these five people, they are, they are the most important thing I'll pay priority to, right? You know, um, in terms of, um, um, of fundraising, right? Um, so 
I hope that answers your question, uh, Emmanuel. I will take the next question. Uh, let me pick uh, one or two questions from the chat. Uh, I have in Kishi is asking a question here. She says, um, my question is how do I get large community or customers in one to get to the stage to get grants on loan? Uh, the question is not clear. Um, that question is not clear. How do I get large customer base um, to get to the stage where I can get grants alone? So again, uh, if you're trying to get grants, grants, um, there are different types of grants. Some grants will finance you at idea stage. So always check the eligibility criteria. Some grants would finance you um, if you have already started and they would state their criteria clearly. So if you need to check for what they're looking for, but um, I usually advise, if you are a business, I advise that you run your business according to your vision, not according to grants, because the thing with grants is that <laughs> once you enter that route, eh, <laughs> it will shift you away. You'll be doing something else before you know what's happening. It will take you time to backtrack to why you started the company. You know, So that's why many times, many VCs do not really invest in companies that get a lot of grant funding. Um, I have another fantastic question here uh, from Tunde. Oh, Babs. <laughs> Babs, Babs. Good to see you. We should host a session together soon. Uh, I'll reach out to you on that. Uh, are you available for one-on-one -on -one consulting? Yes, let's talk now. I'm I'm open to it. Yeah. And how much would you charge for that? <laughs> uh, so um, I would say that I usually don't do like consulting, like one-on-one, -on -one, um, primarily because I, um, I don't know, I, I generally try to avoid it, but when I need to do it, I do it, yeah? So we just started the service at Vets Act. Yeah, we um trying to provide that now to clients. So, and I am quite expensive, <laughs> I'm quite expensive. So like usually, it depends on what I need to do. If it's just like a short session like this, one hour session, I could charge, depends on my relationship with the person, I'll see it as like 50K, could be much, depending on what we're trying to achieve. We're going to six digits. Um, if we need to put up some form of document together, I, I could charge in seven digits, starting at 1M. So um, I'm quite expensive, so usually, uh, if it has to do like writing an actual grant application or something like that, I usually recommend oh um, use Grandmaster or Dio or Ditlay Hub because they provide the services at very um, affordable rates, and I know them too. They're good people, uh, Benga, Dio, you know. So, but I'm I'm happy to jump on the call with you, definitely. Um, Uchena is asking. You mentioned that startup is not for everyone. Could you please explain more? on that so I can understand better. Yeah, the point I was just trying to raise is that a startup, in my own opinion, is um, a business that must be growing fast, you know? Um, you're having 10 customers this month, next month, maybe 20, maybe you get time, you're doing 1,000, 10,000, you know? Like, it's not an organic thing, you know? It's something that must be pumped with money. So um, not everybody has the credibility, not everybody has the experience, not everybody has the, the mind power. Sometimes it could be exhausting, right? Running a startup, the psychological warfare, the emotional body, you are not hitting your targets. Investors are, <laughs> are hoping and counting on you. So some, and then you go online, you hear that, oh, this company just sold, raised $10 million. Hey! This one just raised so so million dollars, and you feel like God, I'm a failure. I'm a failure. <laughs> so, um, startup is not for everyone, really. You know, it's not for everyone at all. I have another question here. It says, um, for instance, a grant application is saying that you should, uh, they want to sponsor an agribusiness project that has a time frame within three years. How can one go about it since it is a project? Sir? Yeah. So for something like this, right? Um. There's something I call innovation development, right? Innovation development projects, right? It's like you want to apply for a grant or some projects, yeah, funding. And they say, okay, we'll finance you X thousand dollars for three years. But you, you, you need a project, you know, you need a specific project that you can package under your business and sell to this funder. 
So that's what I call that an innovation project, um, something, and th that I charge for actually. So I can sit down with someone for like an hour and help you say, okay, for this particular grant, right? This is what you should say. This is what you should do. This is how you should design it. And, and then you can put something together and, you know, and, and sell to your funder. Then um, somebody is asking, my startup has a website that needs people, that helps people find the right and safest parking spots around them. Hmm, nice. We get up to 3,000 visitors every week because people really depend on it not to get told or arrested by traffic on radio. Mm, nice, glory. People have been asking us to monetize the service or get investors to help the service get more elaborate, but we can't seem to find a selling point for the service. We just solve a problem. What can probably be, be a selling point for investors, please? Mm, fantastic. I think I've even seen some people raise money on Shark Tank with this same idea, right? So it seems to me like it's hard to find parking spots because people don't want to get their vehicles towed or arrested and they don't want to spend time finding a parking spot, right? So you could actually charge for that service, literally, right? Um, people could just pay a subscription fee or I don't know, like you find out a way to monetize that and just charge a fee. And what would you be selling to investors? You're selling the, um, investors want to make money and they are like, uh, you know, this parable of talents, yeah. Um, the parable of talents, somebody, one person got one talent and that got two talents and that got five. The, and then the guy who got five doubled his own. And that's how investors are thinking. They're thinking of doubling their money. So um, the question is like, how well can this be monetized and what other types of services can be layered on it, right? Um, when people park their cars, do they need to be washed? I don't really know much about this. Does the car need to be washed? Maybe they can pay for that, for that additional service, you know, so that while their car is parked there, maybe someone come watch the car. I even heard that there's now um, um, the valet parking. Here yeah, somebody comes, take the car and drive it somewhere else, you know, and park the car for people. So you could actually charge for it, but you need to study to understand that industry. Look out for other startups doing the same thing in Africa, South Africa, uh, Kenya or in the US or UK to get more ideas and then extract what can work in Nigeria, you know, and talk to some of these customers too, you know, so your selling point to them is that you will be able to grow this from Lagos to Abuja to Port Harcourt to places where this service um, is needed and maybe you can also take it to other uh, urban locations in, um, in, in Africa. Uh, Chigo is asking a good question here. Yeah. If you have a business that involves production, specifically food processing, at the same time, you have technology, um, you have te a technology idea that, that, that when integrated to your business would enable you to scale. Would you advise both projects are run separately or can you combine both business in one? So I would say in this case, you have to combine it, right? Because um, you are trying to sell um, an innovation you're trying to sell that this is a food business with an innovation, you know, and this innovation is helping to spread it. So maybe like a website where yeah, people are coming to buy the food product or something like that. Um, it may be something else, I don't know, but um, I think you should combine it, you know, so that it's more lucrative. Um, it's more uh, mouthwatering to your potential investors. Uh, another person is asking, my natural, Powder production is at the precede stage, according to your teaching. <laughs> How do I get grants so I don't miss this stage of achievement? Natural powder production is at the precede stage. So precede stage is mostly around investments, 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 investment. Um, grants are for projects. So they are, um, I think I forgot to talk about the different types of money. Yeah, so there are three types of money. There's grants, which is being given by the government or some philanthropic organization or foundation. Um, the second type of um, money is loan, which is being given usually by a bank or a lender, you know, or some of these fintech companies now, they're giving loan. The next type of funding available is um, uh, investments, which is being given mostly by angel investors, which are people who have money that they can spare, or venture capital firms, who are people who collected money from other people 
and pull the money together into one place called a fund. And they're helping those people to manage the money. So they're investing it in other companies so that they can reap sometimes 100 times what they invested. You know, so, um, so again, how do I get grants? You need to check um, Opportunity Desk, Opportunities for Africans, go to the grant session and look for the grant that meets your criteria. Then um, God Scene is asking, I have a salon business uh, and, by, and by God's grace, we have expanded by opening another shop. Oh, congrats, God Scene. It's really one, our desire to expand more and become is a leading brand in Nigeria. How, now I really want to know how to position my business. Oh, that one is easy. There's a company called Legion, Legion Babas. <laughs> Go online and study them. Legion Babas. Go online and study them. You, you'll be, your mind will be blown. There's also another company in uh, Abuja. Oh, I've forgotten the name. But they are quite popular in Wuse. I think it's Wuse too. They have about 10 branches. Their, their logo is red. Is it Johnny Babas? Yeah, Johnny Babas. That's also another very good um, business in Abuja. And I think you should, you should either go to Abuja, study Johnny Babas, um, or go online and read about Legion Babas and just check their social media. You learn a lot of things uh, from them. Um, Justice is asking, uh, are ideas uh, being funded or there has to be a solution first? Sometimes the ideas are funded. Um, sometimes you need to have a solution. But from my experience, the people who have moved beyond idea to developing some form of solution first, they are better off winning. In fact, um, at a much younger age, when I was participating in a lot of com competitions, that was how I was winning global prizes. So I would go into a competition with people from Stanford and Harvard and um, MIT. MIT, then I participated in competition with guys from India, Singapore. And I won them, I defeated them. And how I, I defeated them was that, number one was by the grace of God, 100% the grace of God, the favor of God, that was how I defeated them. Number two was that I used the power of evidence, credibility. I found out that uh, when you go for um, most of these pitching competition, Everybody is saying, I can do this. We can do this. They are trying to sell potential. The people who win are the people who have demonstrated. They are not selling potential. They are telling you that we have done this and this is what we can do. So I remember there was one of um, the first global prize I won, the Global Social Entrepreneurship Competition. It was sponsored by Gates Foundation, Microsoft, and University of Washington. It's like it was a global, like global program. So you have people from all over the world. And the year I won, I had a team on their board. They had Muhammad Yunus, the, the person who founded microfinance in Bangladesh. I also had a team. Um, uh, there was a team, another uh, team, tech team too, you know. My idea was an agricultural idea from Nigeria. <laughs> but we won. What happened? Went in there to pitch. Everybody was pitching, pitching, pitching. Um, eventually, I think 16 of us made it to the global stage. So we flew to Seattle. We got there, we pitched to, so they, break, they broke us into several rooms. Yeah. And then we pitched, pitched, pitched. They will pick the overall top six. So we moved to the finals, right? How did we get even into the program? Number one, evidence of what you can do and then learn how to write well. Many people don't know, they don't know how to communicate their ideas, right? Especially in writing, yeah, you, you are not talking in audio. So learn how to communicate your ideas. Then uh, when we got in there, when I got to the US, myself and my team, we, we did the pitching, rehearsed very well, prepared very well, very good presentation with evidences to show that, yeah, pictures, videos, you know, traction, you know, um, this is our sales, this is what we've produced. We're not talking about innovation yet. We have done something, you know, small scale in one farm. You know, that was exciting for the judges. Why every, some people here coming to present up, all this AI thing started as far back as 2010. <laughs> I mean, people were doing startups. Even me that participated in the program, I didn't even know these people were startups. 
I didn't even know anything about this startup thing. That was when I won that prize, but I had evidence to show. And then um, when we got into the finals, right? We had these guys who had, they, they built this powerful innovation, the guys from Bangladesh and all that. Then we had the guys from India and Singapore, they formed a combined team, and then me from Nigeria. And so when I did the presentation, um, showing evidences, traction, all those kind of things, those guys had done something too, but they didn't have as much as, <laughs> like you could see the raw grits here, you know? So, and then the judges were so impressed that ah, somebody from Nigeria, and I was in Zaria then, Zaria, you know, was it Zaria Benino? So like, I was not even in Lagos or anything like that. And they were very impressed that, ah, this guy with limited resources, limited this, limited that, they're able to do something. Like you deserve it. So I mean, when that award came, it was mind blowing to me, you know. So that was even how I raised my first official capital, you know. So always make sure that you have evidences to demonstrate that uh, you are not just doing idea. Um, let me take more questions. Um, somebody is asking here, can I use some of the strategies you mentioned here to raise money for an angel? Yes, answer is yes. Um, how to get a large market or community in terms of sales? Ah, bros, <laughs> everybody's finding answer to that. <laughs> so, but when we say large market, um, it, what that means is that don't, um, it's better to have a product that more people can use. So you hear about FinTech, FinTech, FinTech. Why is FinTech so popular? Anybody can be a FinTech customer, right? Anybody can be a FinTech customer, yeah? Uh, some some people have products that is so 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 specific. It's a subset of a subset of a subset of a you know. You remember in your community now, eh? Maybe which good example should I use now? Maybe somebody they sell to to Shikampa for Lagos, or no? Let's say in your in your town in worry, somebody they sell to Shikampa, or more. The person must set up that restaurant in a in in a location where most Hausa people live, right? So it's a subset of that community, you know. So your total market size is limited to that small community, right? So, but what we're saying here is that if you decide to sell rice, just rice and stew, you would have more people buying it. In fact, if you go to Benin, for those of you who who, who may have the chance to travel to Benin. On that airport road there, there's one woman they call Mama Abel Pepe Rice. I don't know if she still operates, right? But bros, the woman said white rice and stew. My guy, you will see cars parked outside there eh, just to eat this woman's pepe rice. Rice and stew, that's all. But bros, when you enter that place, you know that this woman is running a big business that is so hard for most restaurants to compete with her on that same axis. Just selling rice and stew. Okay, so that's how to make your market bigger. I don't try to be too, too, too specific to one set of people. Um, somebody asks about, uh, I have seen lapses on my path, but we'll be, okay, 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 that's the feedback. So for this lecture, I'm doing a, a recording and I'm going to share the recording to everyone, okay? Somebody saying, how do I enlarge my beans flour business? I have got a lot of ideas from this webinar, thank you. How do you enlarge your beans flour business? It's simple. I, in fact, I did that business years back when I was in university. I sold beans flour <laughs> on campus. And um, most of my customers were usually Muslims who were having fast. Muslims love the product a lot because um, they can easily use it to prepare uh, akara moment early in the morning before they start fasting and all that. Um, but I, when I look back at that business, I realized something about the bean flour business. I realized that um how do i put this I, I i i learned one of the things i learned from that business is that um you know when you are so captured in technology right the, the fact that you are processing and you can brag to people that oh you know i'm running a processing company that does this does that we process bean flour we package it you know that that thing eh, can make you forget like you lose common sense and what's the common sense? The common sense is that in Nigeria, 99% of people who consume beans, beans flour, 
are people who buy a car by the road. So the actual bean flour is the one that you process fresh and fry by the roadside and people come by. That's how people consume a car. Even moi moi is the one you eat in restaurants, right? Or the one that is cooked at home. It is quite rare for a normal African man to go to the market looking for bean flour that they want to cook a car or moi moi. It's not trendy, you know? So what I would have done differently is to set up an Akara spot, a spot where people can come and buy Akara. The way you go and buy Indomie from all these house people, you know, or from all these local people who have a table where they just fry Indomie. That's what I should have done. And then I should have set up multiple branches. And I think I talked about this earlier. We need to, um, as Africans and as Nigerians, we need to um, not be too fascinated with technology, right? We need to see technology more as an enabler, right? Something that would help us achieve something, not something that replaces common sense about how Africans consume products, you know? So if I was doing the bean flour business again, as a startup, if I was doing it now, higher. In fact, if I decided to do it, that business today, give me two years, it's a multi-million dollar company, right? Because what I would literally do is that I would work with um, like a brand person who package small, small kiosk. One kiosk has gas, stove, all the ingredients, run it, and then I'll franchise it to multiple locations in Lagos, in Ibadan, Delta, Kaduna, wherever, you know? And then I'll raise funding for that business, right? I raise social impact funding, I raise agricultural funding, I raise venture capital funding to spread it. And then I will build, I'll begin to empower farmers, right? With capital to farm beans for me. And I would identify the specific species of beans that gives the best type of acara, you know? Whether it's honey beans or whatever type of beans, you know? And I will build that value chain. And then I will begin to, to do more PR so that globally in the beans value chain, I am recognized in that particular field. And then before you know what's happening, they're inviting me to come and play one award that I have employed uh, 1,000 women or 1,000 uh, youths who have who are making beans every day and we're increasing protein intake in the country. That's what I would do, literally, if I was going to do that type of business. So you see how people like us think, right? We don't just go and start something because we don't have what to do. You have to think strategically about the future of what you're trying to do. And so if, when you're starting from day one, you already know that in the next two, three, four, five years, this is what, where I want to be. And you need to have a roadmap, you know, using some of the things I've thought to achieve that. Uh, I'm giving you guys free ideas because I want to give you value. And I think people are going to pick some of these ideas and um, escalate it from here. Um, I lost your phone number. I like WhatsApp status. You like <laughs> Yeah, so I, I've sent some SMS to you guys. Um, I'm trying to get it to so that I can start doing WhatsApp. Some of you already have my personal contact. Reach out to me. Happy to chat always. Um, yeah, happy to chat always and provide support. Yeah, yes, in need for it. Um, I'm, okay, I'm raising money for entertainment events, uh, which involves music, comedy, and dance. I want to ask, what do you think? my investors will gain from me as a start as a startup. So I think for this kind of business, um, usually, um, I mean, I think maybe this is the point I say, I don't have all the answers, right? Because I, 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 I've I done entertainment business once on campus too. <laughs> oh boy, I did think so. <laughs> I did this, I was, a, I, was a, I was an entrepreneur in school more than I was a student. <laughs> many people don't know that. Uh, but I don't have all the answers, but something I know from, um, putting event, event up. I'm good with putting it up and all that, but uh, I think there's a business side to events. So when you see people do Shark Tank, they literally make millions from organizing that event. Um, somebody who is very good at this is Mo Abudu. Um, she's run different programs in Nigeria. She's so brilliant. And uh, she understands the business side of running events, like literally. So uh, if I were you, I'll probably, um, gather some money, even if it is 500K, I'll fly to Lagos. Moabudu has a hotel. Um, she has a company called Ebony Life. I'll find a way to book an appointment with her, even if it's 30 minutes, or 
I would go online, find courses on entertainment, business, like making money in entertainment, and I would pay for those courses, take them and get a coach or a mentor who would, you know, lead me on how to run that business. So I do not have the answer to that. Um, would investors invest in an ICT academy business? Oh, yeah, that's what they did now with Andela and Co. In fact, a lot of um, ICT academy companies are raising money. You know, because um, in Africa, yeah, we're trying to increase the talent pool um, and all that. So, yeah, you can raise money for that. Another question um, someone is asking here is, um, is the precede where you raise funds to build your MVP? No, no, it's at the bootstrapping stage. Bootstrapping stage, you're raising funds to build your MVP or you're using your own money to build the MVP, right? So it is rare for you to have someone with an idea just raise money, except they've done something before and they have a track record of what they've done before. So one of the companies I invested in, um, Lenko, yeah, so the CEO had run a, a business before and it's someone I know and someone I kind of like believe in, right? So when um, they started the new company, without seeing the products, I already knew that this guy would deliver. So it was an easy investment, you know? Um, so if you already have a track record, yes, you can raise money for Precede. But if you don't, you need to prove yourself. What would be your advice to raise funds to build the MVP without having to share your concept too wide? Ah, bros, share your concept too. Because allow people to steal your ideas. Allow people to steal your ideas. Why did I say so? When you share your idea with people, you get feedback, good feedback that will help you increase the quality of the idea. And if because somebody had your idea, they 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 were so stupid enough to collect that idea, they collect the idea from your hand, see they won't go implement. Ah, bros, well, I'll laugh for them. Because ideas have spirits, right? When somebody has an idea, they have motivation, energy that they want to put into the idea. And sometimes it might take you five to 10 years for your business to really achieve what you want it to achieve, right? So it might not happen in one year, two years, three years. So why would you hear somebody's idea and then you not spend 10 years of your life trying to make it happen? Ah, a lot, if they want to steal, they should steal, no? That's, and then if by the way, they steal your idea and overtake you, it means that you yourself, there's an issue with your execution, okay? So number three, does the same model start, um, start, startup model work for nonprofits that are not to make profits? Uh, what then will be the return of investment by fundraisers? Please share instances where you think that, how does this work for us? Okay, good. So if you're a nonprofit, how does this model work? Um, number one, nonprofits do not raise investments. Uh, typically, they would raise grants. Um, and now, and then it's also this thing called impact investments. So where the investors are taking a, a, a startup funding approach, right? To investing in non-profit projects. And the idea is that the investor will tell you that, okay, see, I'm going to give you $100,000. Yeah, this $100,000, you're going to use it to set up, there's this village in Igbukurusu yeah, they don't have electricity. So you're going to set up a solar power plant in Igbukurusu, yeah? Yeah, um, 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 so that these um, pe some people in the village can have access to electricity. So how you would calculate the return on investment in that case is that you would now come and say that in this community, there are 10,000 people in this community or 1,000 people in this village, right? There are usually not much, let's say 1,000 people in this village. Of these 1,000 people, there are 500 children. Mm -hmm. So in Lagos, where people have electricity or a child has electricity, it means that the child can finish school on time. And when they, because they finish school on time, they have likelihood of getting jobs. And so what is the average pay of somebody in Lagos? The average pay of somebody in Lagos, um, working in Lagos, maybe is 200,000. Okay, and when they get job, the average amount of time they retain job or they work, you know, in, in Lagos is let's say 20 years, you know. So some I mean you might be shifting from company to company, but the average working life of a young person in Lagos maybe is 20 years, and they are making averagely two hundred thousand. So you now say two hundred thousand times 20 years, 
is 200,000 per month times 12 is 24 million, right? You have 24 million. 24 million times 20 years is 480 million, okay? So by giving a child electricity in a community, you are likely going to move the needle, you know, in terms of um, economic development, job creation, and the what of that over the next over the next 20 years is averagely going to be from 200 million to 48 million. Okay, sorry, uh, 200 million to 480 million per child. So therefore, in this community, here yeah, you have 500 kids. Okay, or let's just use one eighty one 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 thousand kids for to make the calculation easier. You are not having about um, is that going to be 48 billion? Okay, about so now you just showed right an investment of hundred thousand dollars is going to only provide electricity for let's say 50 children or 50 families or so right so um you can now use this number to say if i was going to electrify this whole village i probably need one million dollars at scale right which is equals to one million dollars is equals to um is equals to let's say five fifty um five hundred million naira just as an example remember we said to impact one thousand people we need forty eight billion right like, let's just say fifty billion fifty billion okay so the the return on investment we call it SROI social return on investment in this case is going to be fifty billion divided by five hundred million which is almost like a ratio of one to ten. So for every one dollar that this investor is giving you, you are going to return ten dollars in social return on investment to this investor. Do you understand? Now <laughs> we just did that for Jobu. We haven't talked about the impact on health, how access to electricity impacts health. We just talked about how it impacts, you know, um, uh, the ability of people to get jobs in the future. You now do another calculation for health. Do another calculation for these different parameters. So at the end of the day, you will now see that bringing electricity to that community would lead to maybe a social return on investment of one dollar to hundred dollars. So that is how, that is why someone can give your company or your NGO a million dollars to go and run a project without having, um, without getting you to pay them back because the social return on investment is massive, and that is how you calculate it. <laughs> uh, hmm. So, okay. Ha, my secondary school teacher. She's here. Oh my God. Thank you, Ma. <laughs> uh, let me collect her question. She's here. Oh my God. Just so touching. Um, so, we're going to wrap up in um, 10 minutes. So, let me, uh, please, I, I will appeal with you. I'm going to go on Facebook. Uh, after the class, and I'll just drop a picture there uh, of all of us. Um, so please comment, drop how you felt about the class so that other people will see it, you know. Um, so let me take more questions. Um, I have a startup that trains businesses, business owners um, on strategic mindsets and strategic management. At what stage do I seek for grants? Ah, start seeking for grants now. This is a Start seeking for grants immediately. Immediately, don't wait because you're already doing something. Yes, you can send email to the same email that forwarded you the links. Yeah. How can we manage risks when you fundraise money through investors? For example, agri business like poultry, when you have disease outbreak. My brother, it's a very tough one. No? And she does him. It's a very tough, tough one, especially if you took a loan or investment. So therefore. How to manage the risk is please get insurance. Get insurance. Get an insurance company to insure your poultry farm. All right. Um, get an insurance company to insure your poultry farm. It is very, very important to insure your poultry farm. Um, so that if there is a disease outbreak, you can recover part of your investment cost from the insurance company. And, and by the way, insurance company will not even invest in you if you um, do not have the proper um, farm record. So at Vets Act, for example, we have a product called Clever, C-L-E-V-A.org. And that's one of the things what teaching companies um, 
and farms that sign up on Clever. Let's help you set up your farm records, your business records, so that uh, you are well prepared for funding, you know. Um, so please go on clever.org, C-L-E-V-A.org, and sign up there, okay? And then somebody will contact you next week and, and provide you the kind of support you need so that you're investment ready. Um, and it's applicable to people who run farms or um, retail shops or agribusinesses, okay? So please, if you know a poultry farmer around you or you know a vet shop or you know um, a business that sells food, um, refer them to us, clever.org, C-L-E-V-A.org. How do you protect your ideas from being stolen when you discuss with someone about your idea? Allow them to steal it. That's how you protect your idea. Just, just don't worry about st people stealing your idea. <laughs> don't worry. It's the least worry in this life. It's even Elon Musk, Elon Musk that is a billionaire, built a, mm -hmm. a, what do you call it now? Built, this is Tesla vehicles and all those things. But bros, he put the whole designs online now. So even you can go and collect the designs for Tesla or for some of their products, but go and build it yourself now. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. That's the, now there you go, set blue. So anybody who wants to steal your idea, you steal, but make sure that you get feedback that will help you to grow your business, okay? Um, okay, so please, some of us don't have your personal contacts. Okay. Um, so let me share with you guys a phone number, yeah? You can use that to WhatsApp me, okay? I'm going to be sharing stuff. Use that to WhatsApp me, that's my business line. Do not call. I'm terrible with calls. What? But if you WhatsApp me, I will respond to you. Okay. And then, um, okay. I'm going to share it on on the chat now. So look out for the contact in the chat. Um, plus two three four eight one one four two four. Nine nine four two. Yeah, that's it. So make sure you use that. That's my business line. Um. So I'm going to run through the last set of questions we have here. Um. Okay. <laughs> so guys, oh, Doctor Jesse. Is asking a question. My business is at the idea stage. I'm a vet. I want to produce poultry egg with, without antibiotics, but I'm puzzled by this presentation with the fact that I need a large customer base. But this customer are used to buying eggs in open yeah in open crate. Most most of it will loss of antibiotics, but cheaper. How do I compete with these people? Oh, this is this is um if I were you and uh, Dr. JC, what I would do is this. If I want to produce eggs that do not use antibiotics, right? It means that the eggs will be premium products. So who would appreciate that? People who are health conscious and businesses that are health conscious. So that would be restaurants that value organic eggs and don't want to sell trash to their customers um, or hotels that do that. And then individuals, so I would target them. So hotels, B2B, you target hotels. B2, B2B means business to business. So you have a business selling to another business, right? So you target hotels and restaurants that would pay premium for that product. Then the second set of people you should target are B2C, consumers, people who would pay premium for that product. And so there's this guy, this man I love a lot. Um, his name is Joel Salatin. If you can read about him, you please do Joel Salatin. Joel Salatin runs a farm, like this organic farm, and at every point in time, you go to US Latin's farm, all the products on the farm are sold. If you enter his farm now and you see 100 cattle, he farms, is he, is he how many thousand birds? Probably like, I don't know, 100,000 or 50,000 birds. Anything you see on the farm is sold. Why? Because he used a club idea to run the farm. So which means that the customers are club members. They are members of the farm. So people schedule their products. They already know that every day or every week, I'm going to get um, a supply of chicken, eggs, and this. So if you want to buy from Joyce or Latin Farm, you have to book months ahead. And I love that um, um, idea. 
So, so you build a community around your farm, around your product, so that people are loyal to your brand. Um, kindly explain if a school business is a startup business. Answer is yes, no. If you have a school that you're running, it's, it's not really a startup, it's a school business, right? But if your vision is to have a thousand branch of your school in Nigeria, then that is a startup. Because the difference between a startup and a traditional business is a startup has a vision and DNA of growth. So how do you move from one school to a thousand branches in Nigeria, a thousand branches in Africa? There is a, there is a company that almost runs like a startup. Uh, it's a school, but almost runs like a startup. It's called, um, forgotten your name, Bright something. Is it Bright Point or Bright... Uh, I think they have bright in their name and they're based in East Africa. You can research them. They have a very good mod model. Okay, Halima says they can insure types of businesses. <laughs> oh, Sherry Fat, thank you, thank you. So guys, um, somebody says, I have a smart solution for Nigerian students. What is the possibility that it can work out and investors will invest in it? Mm, yeah, until you take steps, you take steps, implement it on campus. That was how Facebook started. And then you see how things move on from there. Um, so guys, uh, I really, uh, I really appreciate you guys joining the call. Uh, please go on Facebook, drop your comments. I'm going to in the next um, five minutes, I'll, I'll paste something on my Facebook wall. Uh, I would appreciate if you can comment, drop um, feedbacks, what you liked about the class and all that. I've shared my um, business contact with you. Um, if you have other questions you'd like to gist about or so, yeah, chat me up. I'm always excited about uh, us as entrepreneurs and what we're trying to do um, for the ecosystem, all right? I love you all. Um, I look forward to doing this again with you guys soon. God bless you. Have a good time. I will share the link to the video by email with everyone, okay? Once they are ready. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'll stop sharing my screen now. So have a good time, guys. Um, I'm, just hold on, let's do a picture together. I forgot. <laughs> Let's do, let's see if we can do a photo together. <laughs>